Let's do one more word with the Honorable Mr. Justice Murray Sinclair, who has added a new title to his resume. He has just been appointed an independent senator by Prime Minister Trudeau. And I guess I want to start there. Why would you agree to accept this appointment, Senator? Uh, well, uh, it, uh, it was certainly a, a question I had to consider very carefully and had to discuss very carefully with my family. Uh, those who were following the work of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission will remember that on the last day of the commission I had promised my wife and my family that that was it, that I was stepping back from public life and that I would give more time to family. And that was my plan and that's what I did for a period of time. Uh, but one, when uh, one gets a call like this to, uh, to take on the role of, uh, of a functionary within government that might have some influence about uh, implementation of the calls to action of the very report uh, which I helped to author uh, was uh, convincing enough to me and to my family that this was something that I should do. And it just seemed like a natural outcome of that, that work and that process. And, and I think uh, th that we recognized the challenges that it was going to place and continue to place on us uh, because of the amount of travel involved. Uh, but at the same time, it would be a different kind of an, uh, an environment. And, and so I wanted to ensure that uh, everybody was OK with it. And, and the bottom line is this, if it isn't working out, I can always go back to retirement. <laughs> Now, if I understood your first answer, when the Prime Minister asked you, I guess you didn't say yes right away, is that right? No, that's right. I, I didn't. I, I said that, uh, well, I, I was aware that I had been nominated, um, but of course uh, a lot depends upon uh, what that call says and what that call reveals. And uh, because the uh, the, the, the process of nomination merely gets you to that point where he then puts names forward to the Governor General. And, and so our conversation was very positive and, and it really centered on the question of independence because I said I, I'm, I'm not going to be part of any uh, partisan uh, caucus in, in the Senate, that I believe that the Senate should be independent from the House of Commons and that I believe that senators should have the right to be independent from each other. And if, uh, if those terms were acceptable to him, then that position was acceptable to me. Hmm. And, uh, and he very quickly agreed that that was his thinking too. I, I presume you've had this question before, but I'm going to ask it anyway. And that is, you just took part in a very lengthy, honorable, inspirational, uh, perhaps game-changing, um, you know, of tremendous historical importance, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Those, that process that you led uh, may bring the kind of historic change in this country that we haven't, the likes of which we haven't seen in decades and decades, if not centuries. You are now about to join, or I guess you have joined, the most discredited political institution in the history of the country. And I wonder how you overcame your qualms about doing that. I know a lot of senators, and I know a lot of senators are very honorable, uh, kind, generous, intelligent, and wise people. Uh, and, uh, and as I said at the time when I was uh, uh, discussing my first public uh, uh, meeting about making the decision to become a senator, I, I have seen the Senate function at a time in my life when it was truly a, a respectable and, and uh, an institution which was important to us. And I've seen the important work that it's done over the years. And I've always considered the Senate to be like a council of elders, that it needs to be uh, uh, armed with wisdom. It needs to be unafraid to use that wisdom and to, to use that wisdom to stand up for the people, to ensure that the the government, which is elected to govern, can govern and, and is allowed to govern, but that it, uh, in doing so, does not lose sight of its responsibility to the people. Because governments can become um, trapped by private interests as well and um, by you know, partisan beliefs and belief systems. And I, I think the Senate's responsibility is to ensure that that does not become an overly dominant feature of Canadian life. And uh, I know that people have, over the years, uh, criticized the, the Senate because it's an institution that's not elected, that it's not um, 
uh, a process that uh, has shown itself to be effective sometimes and more recently has been covered with scandal. But the reality is that like many institutions in society, uh, we can get past that. The judiciary of this country has often been criticized for the same thing. And I think that the judiciary has shown itself to be able to stand up to that criticism to overcome its uh, weaknesses and, and uh, those things that have led to those uh, allegations and, and to be able to stand up for the people to ensure that the people are protected uh, from governments that are acting unfairly and improperly. And so as an, uh, as an institution, our independence from the political process is actually a, an asset that we need to take advantage of. Our independence from the privacy interests needs to be protected and needs to be enshrined in the work of the Senate. And, and our work as senators needs to be truly uh, an independent uh, uh, process, but also with a, an overwhelming sense of responsibility to the Canadian public. In which case, since you used to be a judge, you're the right person actually to ask this question to, how will you judge whether or not you have been successful? Well, even as a judge, I've always said that the only way that anybody will be able to know for sure is to be uh, able to evaluate everything that I've done at the end of my days, and that's true for this as well. But as I'm going along, my intention is to uh, maintain the values that have uh, governed me throughout the course of my life and my career and to uh, implement those values as I see them and to uh, guide myself on certain principles that I think the Senate itself as an institution should be following and to uh, also ensure that uh, we do not see ourselves as either as an institution that either is there to promote what the government is doing or is there simply to oppose what the government is doing. We are there to ensure that the process of government in this country works fairly for all. And we wish you well with those efforts. Senator Sinclair, thanks for joining us on TVO. Thank you very much, Steve. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.